Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Mindscape TV. We have another great episode for you of another hot topic, and that is microdata. So I've got a search results page up here, and it's showing us, uh, I typed in chicken soup recipe. Okay, now many of you I'm sure have seen a lot of these search results, and you're probably wondering how in the world does Google get so smart in showing these little stars on the search results, images, uh, all that type of stuff. This happens to be for chicken soup recipes. I can see an image of it, looks great. How many times it was rated and what the review is. Um, I can click right through to some other recipes in here, some related ones. Uh, I can also take a look at um, Justin Timberlake, for example. No one actually populates this image over here. You can see there's a big banner, uh, information about Justin Timberlake, the, you know, when he was born and where. Uh, all that great stuff. We can actually see his songs that uh, are, are current here, any upcoming events, uh, his albums, uh, all that type of stuff is all listed over there in a very rich snippet of code. No one actually updates that, right? There's not a person that's responsible for updating the Google page of Justin Timberlake. Google is filling that stuff in based on what it knows. And you can see this information here actually comes from Wikipedia. We can take a look at some other stuff. Here's some movie listings. I just searched for Life of Pi. It's a, getting a little bit old here, but um, still in some movie theaters. You can see it's at Celebration Cinema and at AMC, where they actually list the show times in here that I can go see it. Um, AMC actually has you know quite a few more. They've got a map in here I can get to, uh, and they actually have linkable um, times that go right to their website and for me to uh, potentially buy tickets. So how in the world does Google figure out all of this information? We can watch a trailer, all of this stuff for a movie listing um, without someone actually manually going in there and editing all of that information. Well, the, how they do it is through the use of microdata. And I wanna thank again, Joel Vanderveen for suggesting this topic. It's a great topic. So we will be sending you, uh, if we haven't already, we'll be sending you um, a wonderful Ninja Drive for the suggestion since we did produce your topic. Um, so anyway, we, we've got another great episode here. And how do we figure out how to do this so that Google shows our events and our people in our authorship and maybe our recipes and things like that? Well, again, it's through the use of microdata. Microdata is actually defined by a standard, and the standard can be found at schema.org. That's uh, S-C-H-E-M-A dot org. And if we go here, it'll kind of tell us um, a little bit about schema.org. But if I click over here on schemas, it will show me the things that are available for me to define on my site. Now a schema is basically a collection of properties and fields that define particular information on my web page. So for example, a lot of us will, um, on our website, if we've got an address for our physical business location, we'll put you know address and then our address. City with our city, state with our state, zip with our zip. And though that's great for human readability, um, a computer has no idea. So the Google bots and the Bing and the Yahoo bots that crawl our websites, they don't actually know what that data means. They can see that the text zip is there and then a number, and they might be able to infer that. And a lot of times Google and, uh, and Bing and all those search engines are smart enough to do that. But with some other information uh, that's not so well defined, maybe the description of your business, um, maybe the CEO of your company, songs, um, events, recipe information, all that type of stuff, that's not so easily definable by a computer. That's where microdata comes in. Microdata allows us to tag little pieces of text within our website and give some context to the search engines for what that is. So rather than just a piece of text on our website that says 1234 Main Street, uh, it's wrapped in a little bit of uh, HTML that is super easy to write, and we'll cover it in a minute, that just tells it that this is an address, okay? So let's take a look here at some examples on schema.org. Uh, the, probably the biggest thing is that people are going to want to do is the local business, but certainly there's events, there's health and medical types, there are books and movies and music recordings, uh, all of this great type of stuff. So if you're producing content like that, I would highly recommend you use these microdata snippets to actually tag your, your content appropriately. 
So let's take a look at the local business schema. You can see here up at the top, uh, this is the location of the schema.org, the schema for a local business, all right? And if we take a look down here, you can see all of the properties and the expected data types for those properties that can help define a local business. All right, so you can see down here, we've got a postal address, which is actually a, a, a sub property of a place. And we'll cover that in a minute, but you can have ratings on here. You can have events on here for your place, your uh, geographic coordinates, uh, all of that type of stuff. Link to your map, reviews, your telephone number, photos, um, all of that type of stuff. So if we come down here, I won't spend a whole lot of time on all these um, pieces of information. You can certainly check them out yourself. You can actually then get even more specific. So if you have your own auto in-home childcare business, you can actually define it specifically as a childcare business. Same for radio station or recycling centers. I mean, they get very, very specific. And this is constantly being updated. Schema.org has been around for a few years now. And uh, I remember when I first discovered them a couple years ago, they had very few schemas actually defined. Um, and it's, they've really been able to flesh this out. So let's take a look at some before and after examples of some HTML. So here is an example of beach walk, beachware, and giftware, right? Uh, uh, probably a local business, uh, looks like they're in Florida. This is just fictitious at this point, but you can see they've got a header tag here with the name of their store and a little quick description of what they offer with their address and phone number. Very, very common piece, probably seen in a footer uh, of most websites. Well, what might that look like with some microdata? Well, let's take a look here. <clears throat> here we've got, what we've done is we've wrapped our um, name and all of this information about our business in a div. And that, for those of you not familiar with HTML, that's basically like a page division. It is a, a division of content on your page. It's a little container, okay? So we're basically creating a container with this div and we're telling, um, we're telling it that we're scoping out this container, so we have an item scope, and that scope is a local business. And where did this URL come from? Well, it came right from up here, where we have all of the definitions and all the properties and values uh, for this particular schema. So that's all you do, it's, it's, you type that right in for, um, this basically tells Google, here are the possible values that I'm looking for for a local business. All right, and then everything within this container, I can define. So then we see here's our H1 again, same as what we had up here. But this time I wrap this in a little span, which is just another kind of sub container, if you will. This could be a div as well. Um, and in fact, I'm pretty sure you could put um, your item property right within your H1. Uh, but what this is doing is it's defining, here's our, the name of our, of our business again. And we are telling it this time that the property of this piece of text is the name of our local business. Uh, next, we have this description. And again, we are seeing it's in a span. We have, here's our, the same thing we had up here. We've got this listed down here in a span and then now we're telling Google that the property of this bit of text is the description of our business. Here's where it gets a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. You can see in here now we are listing our address, all right? And now we have another div. So imagine a box inside of a box. We have a box for our local business, and now we have another little box in there that contains address information. So inside of this div, we actually are saying this is now scoped to a postal address. And we go to schema.org slash postal address. So within here, we have a property of street address, and then we list our street address. We have a property of address locality, which is Mexico Beach, and then region, which is Florida. So that's all well and good. That's how we define an address in there. And then you can see we have the human readable phone that's not contained in anything. But then we have a item property of telephone with our telephone number in there. All right, so that's a very simple way to mark up your address information for your local business. Um, what this starts to do now is Google can help map those locations. There's, there's a million different things Google can start to do with this information once they actually know what type of information it is. This isn't just a paragraph of text on your website. 
It's not just a bulleted list somewhere. It's not just a date and a phone number and things like that. Once Google knows exactly what it is, they can start to craft those rich snippets much more intelligently once they start to get other people doing this, right? If you're the only one who's defining um, you know, a gas station, for example, Google's not gonna come up with a rich snippet to do that. But as more gas stations and as more uh, places start to do that, um, imagine what can happen to those search results. You can actually get a nice rich snippet, maybe with the picture of your business, your hours, your locations, and Google is doing that on some locations already. So the more information you can actually define on your website from your address and phone number um, through this microdata, the better off you're going to be. Even if Google isn't supporting it and creating rich snippets today, uh, if you are doing it, you're gonna just be better off because it's gonna be just a matter of time for Google to start optimizing and uh, changing some of those pages. If we go through another just quick example here, I won't cover everything, but I'll cover some additional things. Here's another example. This one happens to have some reviews on it, um, a link to their website, hours, and um, you know a price range, and if they take reservations and stuff. This is a restaurant example. So let's take a look here. Um, let's say you wanted to define this uh, in your own website. So you can just go ahead, build the HTML, and then just go ahead, copy it, uh, or just put it on your page, either way, and you can use this uh, rich snippet data testing tool within Google. It's found within Webmaster Tools. Uh, you come in, once you land in within Webmaster Tools, uh, you click on Other Resources, and then there's the Rich Snippets Testing Tool in there. Go ahead, if you're, if you're putting this on your page and you want to test your page, copy-paste your URL in there and hit Preview. I'm just going to jump this HTML in here a minute and hit Preview. And you can see, because this isn't coming from a page, um, Google just shows your page title comes here. This will pull in the name of our page, our URL. Here's where our ratings are gonna show up. And then uh, this particular piece here, it wouldn't show up because Google is gonna get that from your site, from your meta, excuse me, meta description. But if we come down here, we can see all the extracted data that is actually picked up from our listing to see if we've done it correctly. You can see we've got opening hours in here, our cuisine, the URL of our business, the name of our business, um, where it's actually pulling this information from, from uh, the restaurant schema. Uh, we can then actually see that we're pulling the aggregate rating and the postal address too. So Google is able to understand all of this great, great rich data about our business the ratings, how many reviews it's had, what type of cuisine we serve in this particular case, a link to our website. Absolutely, fundamentally rich data to the experience for Google to start building uh, these pages like Justin Timberlake has here, but for your business. So, that's microdata. Schema.org is kind of the key to it all. Go ahead, it's just a matter of marking up some of your information. Uh, in a semantically correct way so that Google understands what that information is. It's not difficult to do. Don't be intimidated by it. You can't really wreck anything by adding these tags in there unless you do something horribly wrong. Uh, don't forget the quotes. And um, I mean, I would absolutely recommend doing it. Give us your experiences below. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear more about how you are using uh, microdata in your website. So thanks for joining us this week. We hope you found this episode valuable, relevant, and interesting. That you'll like, comment, and share our videos. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mindscape HM TV. Please join us on Facebook and Twitter at Mindscape HM. Or read our blog posts and join us online at Mindscape-HM.com. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next week.